Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be presenting to you my top five best Transformers Studio Series figures. The reasoning behind why I'm doing this particular video is because the Studio Series has now reached an entry count of around 44, which is an extortionate amount of figures for a brand new movie line. I thought that with such variety, it would be great for me to present to you my top five picks out of the entire Studio Series line and what figures are my favorite as of this day. Now this video is bound to be controversial as everyone has their own favorite figures in the line. Some people will prefer figures over other figures, which is bound to be the case with a top five video. The top five that I'm going to be presenting to you in this particular video won't necessarily be the top five that I present to you when I do my end of year Studio Series ranking video. It's just really the the top five figures that at the moment I think are the most enjoyable and are the most faithful to what we see on screen. Taking the fifth spot on my list has to be the deluxe class clunker bumblebee that was released earlier on in this year. Now I know that a majority of you will be quite surprised in my pick as this is a, literally another deluxe class bumblebee. However, I actually believe that this is one of the most movie accurate deluxe class bumblebee figures that we've ever got at mass retail. Now I do understand that this particular figure was released as part of last year's wave. However, the Hasbro decided to re-release this figure with some slight modifications to the overall build structure of the figure as well as give him a more movie accurate paint scheme, especially in his vehicle mode. The original version was not rusted nor dilapidated like it should have been and Hasbro corrected it with this new release. They also improved tolerances on this particular figure, all the ball joints held in exceptionally well and were very stiff which was unlike some of the previous versions that we got as part of wave 1 of the Studio Series and they actually put a metal pin through the roof section which greatly improved the enjoyability of the transformation. Taking the changes out of the build structure, the figure is so movie accurate. This is probably the best representation we've ever got of the 1977 Camaro that appeared in the first live action Transformers movie. This figure completely destroys the original version, which whilst was fairly large and made out of very sturdy plastic, it was very inaccurate, especially in its head sculpt, and its overall design was fairly clunky. With advancements in technology, this brand new Studio Series figure allows us to get the most definitive representation of that particular Bumblebee to date. And not only is it really accurate, but they actually have included interchangeable parts. You can swap out Bumblebee's forearm, for a more movie accurate looking arm cannon which wasn't apparent on the previous release. Back when the original version was released you literally had two rockets that sat over the top of Bumblebee's shoulders which whilst was fairly accurate to the film wasn't the weapon that we saw Bumblebee use when he was in the 1977 Camaro mode. If you recall correctly Bumblebee did use his cannon very briefly in order to fight off barricades. All of these reasons and so much more have made this particular figure one of my most enjoyable Bumblebee figures to date hence why it has taken the fifth spot on my top 5 studio series list. Taking the 4th spot on my list has to go to the Studio Series Voyager Class Rampage. This figure completely blew me away upon receiving it back in February. This figure was originally announced way back in October and upon its official announcement I can't say that I was too fussed about it as I was never really a fan of its design or the character in the Revenge of the Fallen movie. I never managed to pick up the Takara version with the more red accurate paint scheme that made its debut back when the Revenge of the Fallen line materialised nor did I ever pick up the original Rampage that was a part of the mainline ROTF toy line. This particular figure is amazing for so many reasons. Starting off firstly is the fact that it is so abstract in design. It's completely different from any of your other movie Decepticons in the sense that it is a Decepticon that balances itself on a pogo stick. This is probably the first Voyager figure that we've ever got for the movies and dare I say ever got altogether that actually has to come with an additional stand piece in order to make it stand correctly. This figure in the robot mode looks so accurate to the movie. I'm a massive fan of the head sculpt as well as the fact that they actually use plastic for the treads which was something that I was worried that they would in fact use a rubbery type of material that would eventually degrade over time. This figure also has a really fun and very interesting transformation. Robot mode to his bulldozer alt mode is extremely fun to go from and the bulldozer alt mode is just as accurate as the robot mode. It really is quite a fun little alternate form and it looks really good on display. It also goes really well with the other constructor cons and mentioning constructor cons another reason why this figure is so high on the list is the fact that it will actually be used to combine to form the Studio Series Devastator. The original Revenge of the Fallen Devastator was comprised 
of its own vehicle form which never included robot mode. This particular figure was the first Constructicon to start off Devastator and I must say it's definitely left a very positive impression on me. I have high hopes for all of the Constructicons and I have all of them up to long haul and all of them are so good. This particular figure's third mode which is of course Devastator's foot is also tremendous, it's so accurate to the film and I really am a massive fan of its design. The only way in which this figure slightly lacks is due to articulation. I really wish that they could have found a way to perhaps give him elbow joints. As this figure doesn't have elbow joints it does restrict you from posing him in certain positions, but that really is the only downfall I have on this particular figure. If it had improvements in articulation, this figure definitely would have been much higher on the list. But as it stands, this figure takes top 4th spot on my Studio Series ranking list. Taking the 3rd spot on my list has to go to the Voyager Class Revenge of the Fallen Megatron. This particular design of Megatron has always been my favourite and I'm still even to this day undecided between whether I like this particular version of Megatron or how he appeared in Dark of the Moon or even the 2007 movie. The reasoning behind why this particular figure is so high on the list is because originally we got two very lacklustre, both Leader and Voyager class figures from the original Revenge of the Fallen toy line. Both of them were very inaccurate in their own ways, and whilst I do think that the leader from that particular line was superior over the Voyager, it still wasn't very accurate to the film and definitely wasn't a very definitive looking Megatron. Hasbro completely recorrected this when they released this particular Voyager. It was a fantastic scale being larger than other Voyager class figures and had a very interesting transformation that wasn't too complex nor too simple and was a transformation that resulted in both a very accurate looking vehicle form and a very accurate looking robot mode. This particular figure had a very proportionate look in the robot mode and the proportions didn't look too out of place like they did on the original leader class figure. The figure had a fusion cannon that matched what we saw in the movie rather than a massive lobster claw that was apparent on the original leader class figure and also had a really awesome very detailed looking head sculpt. I also really loved the articulation on this particular figure. He is a very fun figure to pose around and from every single angle he looks really really well done. The figure's tank mode is also really faithful to the movie. Whilst it doesn't include the wings that we do see Megatron obtain in certain scenes within the film, I still think that it does definitely capture the essence of what Megatron looked like in the film when he was transformed into his alternate mode. He did kind of flip between being a jet and a tank in the movie, so I am kind of glad that they went with his tank form, as that is the mode we see him utilise in the forest fight. The only downfalls that this particular figure has is mainly due to the fact that he is hollow in the chest area when in robot mode, However, that's never really been a problem for me as I don't tend to notice it very much and I don't ever have my figures posed from a side view, so that's not necessarily a drawback from my perspective. However, what is a drawback is this very lacklustre paint job. The original Revenge of the Fallen Studio Series Megatron that we got had very minimal paint application and its grey plastic was its majority colour. This was of course recorrected this year when Hasbro took it upon themselves to actually re-release this figure with a battle damage deco which consisted of a brand new head sculpt and a really awesome paint scheme. However, I've always preferred my figures to represent what they looked like throughout the majority of the film rather than in a small clip that took place towards the end of the movie. The only reason why this particular figure isn't further up on my list is simply due to the fact that it has lacklustre paint, but other than that I definitely think that this is the best Megatron that the Studio Series has given us yet. Taking the runner-up spot on my list has to go to the leader class Grimlock based on his appearance from Transformers Age of Extinction. This figure completely blew me away when I was first shown product images of it at Toy Fair 2018. This particular figure was so movie accurate that I really believed at first that it was perhaps a movie masterpiece figure and the paint applications that were applied to it I thought were surely a test product that Hasbro had no intention of releasing at mass retail. However, as April dawned upon us last year, I finally managed to get a hold of this figure for myself and behold, Hasbro had released a movie accurate looking figure that had one of the best paint jobs ever produced by them at retail price. This particular figure is amazing in both its robot mode as well as its Tyrannosaurus Rex mode after having two very lacklustre leader and Voyager figures from the Age of Extinction as well as the Last Night toy line, they finally give us this very almost 100% movie accurate looking Grimlock. I think that the robot mode is probably potentially the most accurate looking robot form that we've ever got for any character in the movie. It really is amazing that when you compare what the robot mode of Grimlock looks like compared to the actual CGI render, how very few differences there really are. 
The transformation is also quite simplistic, but not to the point where it feels as if though it is a kid's toy. It still has some really neat elements into it, and transforming into the T-Rex mode is definitely very satisfying. Turning to the T-Rex mode, that really is probably the only mode that I have some gripes with, as essentially, whilst it is a massive improvement over the previous versions, it still isn't 100% correct. The neck was very slim, and he didn't have a very substantial tail. I do believe that it was just the mace weapon that folded out into a tail which didn't look very good when in hand. However, DNA Designs actually released an upgrade kit that completely corrected the wrongs, which made this particular figure almost masterpiece grade in terms of its quality. Another drawback that this specific figure had was the fact that it had came with no accessories whatsoever, but that was probably due to the fact that it was one of the biggest leader class figures that we've had since the Dark of the Moon toy line. I definitely think that this figure is fantastic, it is one of the best leader class figures that I personally believe have come out of the Studio Series, and even just tops over the new newly released studio series Jetfire. So of course, taking the top spot on this particular list has to go to the studio series Optimus Prime based on his appearance from the Bumblebee solo movie. This figure is so amazing that I would really and truly be better off doing its own separate video as I just have so much to talk about this particular release. After never really being a fan of the design that Optimus obtained within Age of Extinction and The Last Knight, it was a breath of fresh air when we finally got images of this particular design which resembled Optimus looking more like his iconic self with actual truck pieces on the core robot mode. The original Age of Extinction and the Last Knight design kind of drew away from Optimus having vehicle mode parts on his robot mode, which wasn't the essence of the character. Optimus has always been known for having truck windows in the chest, a very square-like head design, as well as having smokestacks situated near or around the shoulder area. He also has always had wheels situated on his legs, so upon seeing the Bumblebee movie, I was thrilled to see that they had finally harkened back to the original G1 cartoon and given us an Optimus Prime that actually looked as if though he could transform. This particular design has been one of my favourite designs to ever come out of any of the movies and I'm not really even a G1 fan, I just loved his design and thought that it was executed really well on screen. Getting back to the figure, the figure is a dead ringer for what we see in the movie. Considering that this was probably based on early concept art, it really is amazing how accurate Hasbro actually got this particular figure in order to resemble what he looked like on screen. Of course there are probably some discrepancies in the design, however these are all discrepancies that couldn't necessarily be avoided due to the fact that Hasbro was sent extremely early concept art before the movie had even aired. The figure looks amazing in his robot mode, the details are really well done, as well as the articulation. The overall build quality of the figure is also very nice, it definitely feels like a very sturdy, very high quality figure and the plastic doesn't seem thin nor fragile whatsoever. The transformation between robot mode and truck mode is one of the most involved transformations that we've had for an Optimus Prime in a very long time. It's very different from any of the other movie Optimuses that we've had so far and really and truly was just a breath of fresh air. The truck mode was also really nice, however it was fairly inaccurate to what we saw in the movie. However, I do imagine that Hasbro were probably just briefed on the fact that it was going to resemble something like his G1 self, so they went with going for a very basic black nose truck. Nevertheless, it definitely looks like what we saw in the movie and definitely gets the job done. I also really like the Ion Blaster that the figure comes with. It has some exceptional detailing. Whilst not painted, you can make out all the details of the sculpt. And my only wish now is that this particular design for Optimus carries over in future movies. It has been announced that there will in fact be a Bumblebee 2 movie that will feature Optimus Prime and Bumblebee buddying up. So I really do hope to see this design carry on and continue for future movies and hopefully over time this particular figure will actually evolve into something even better, eliminating all inaccuracies altogether. So there you go, they were my top 5 most best Transformers Studio Series figures that I believe deserve those rankings as of this day. As I stated at the beginning of this video, this video is of course going to be controversial with a lot of people as lots of people have their preference on what figures they prefer. However, as of this date, they are my top 5 picks. Of course, it's probably going to change within, you know, the next week, next month, and especially towards the end of the year, as we begin to get more Studio Series figures in the list. The reasoning behind why those particular 5 were chosen was due to the simple fact that I find them very enjoyable, and it's probably due to the fact that they are such an upgrade over their original versions. 
the studio series main priority is to take older characters and to give them a brand new refreshed and updated figure that resembles what it looked like on screen with advancements in technology Hasbro are able to produce figures and create transformations that perhaps they weren't able to do 10 or 11 years ago when the original 2007 Transformers movie came out. I do believe that this list will of course evolve and as the year progresses it probably will change quite significantly, however I must say that the Optimus Prime figure will definitely take a lot in order to nudge it from first place as it is slowly edging itself to being my number one top figure for the year. I hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did please let me know down in the comment section below and also be sure to let me know what your top 5 picks are and whereabouts you would rank them if you were to do a particular list like this. I hope that you enjoyed this video and until my next video I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.